In a previous video, we introduced the role of intermolecular forces in solution formation. In this video, we want to look at the energetics of solution formation in a little bit more detail, and this will again involve the intermolecular forces that are breaking and forming when solutes and solvents mix. Anytime intermolecular forces are forming or breaking, it involves changes in energy. Breaking intermolecular forces is generally very difficult which means that this requires an input of energy. Any process that requires an input of energy is known as an endothermic process. An endothermic process can be thought of as being very difficult because you're going from a low energy to a high energy process, much as the cat is going from uphill in an energetic cycle. Forming intermolecular forces tends to stabilize a system. This results in a release of energy in what we call an exothermic process. Exothermic processes lead to a decrease in the overall energy, much like the cat on the cycle going downhill. We've already learned that intermolecular forces are important in whether a solution will form or not. Now that we involved energy processes, we can understand how the forming and breaking of intermolecular forces helps explain the energetics of solution formation. The solution process can be seen as a cycle of breaking and forming intermolecular forces between the various solute and solvent particles. Separating solute particles can be given a notation of delta H solute, and from the previous slide we saw that separating solute particles, breaking their intermolecular forces, is an endothermic process. At the same time, separating solvent particles by breaking their intermolecular forces is also an endothermic process, and we would designate this with delta H solvent. The mixing of solute and solvent particles we will denote with a delta H mix. We have seen in the previous slide that the formation of intermolecular forces between solute and solvent particles is an exothermic process which lowers the overall energy. The entire solution process can be designated with a delta H solution. Now we have the question, is delta H solution overall an endothermic or an exothermic process? If we have a mathematical equation with all of these different delta H values or enthalpy change values, then we can compare the relative magnitudes of each enthalpy value to come up with an idea of whether the enthalpy of solution is going to be endothermic or exothermic. If the solute enthalpy and the solvent enthalpy are about equal in magnitude to the enthalpy of mixing, then that means the enthalpy of the solution is going to be fairly close to zero. As a result, the enthalpy of solution combined with the entropy gain that results from mixing the different particles indicates that it will be likely that a solution will form. However, if the enthalpy of the solute and the enthalpy of the solvent are much less than the enthalpy of mixing, this means that the enthalpy of the entire solution process is going to be much less than zero. This means the solution process is an exothermic process, and overall, the solution enthalpy combined with the entropy should easily favor formation of a solution. If, on the other hand, the enthalpy for the solute and the enthalpy for the solvent are much greater than the enthalpy for the mixing process, then overall the enthalpy for the solution process will be much greater than zero, or very endothermic. If the enthalpy of solution is not very large, the entropy term could help the solution to form if the enthalpy of solution is only slightly endothermic. But if the enthalpy of solution is very endothermic, then the entropy term will not help out, and in that case, no solution will form. By now, you should be able to identify the various steps in the solution formation process. You should also be able to indicate which steps are endothermic and which steps are exothermic. Finally, you should be able to predict if a solution will form based on the relative magnitudes of the various steps in the solution formation process.